right, we'll call to order the <coughs> Monday, May 1st, 2017 meeting of the North Reading School Committee. And as usual, we'll start with public input. If you have anybody in the audience that has uh, anything that uh, is not on our agenda, this is the time to bring it up. hands raised so we'll go on to the next item on our agenda which is student report Michael Tyrell class of 2019 is with us tonight Michael uh, good evening I'm Michael Tyrell I'm a sophomore here I've spoken to the school committee a few times um, spring sports this year are following a successful trend characteristic of North Reading in recent years girls softball remains undefeated with a record of eight to zero so they have eight wins zero losses thanks to their brand new field and on Sunday, North Reading High School hosted the Division IV State Relay Meet. In this event, our boys and girls teams won the Division IV Relays, and another student representative, Jensen Kadamaitam, you may have heard from him before, uh, broke two school records. Did he really? Yes. Which one? Do you know? Which uh, he broke the SMR, which is short, medium relay, wow. and he broke the pole vault. Pole vault. Uh, really? So, great for him. Uh, in addition, the girls' tennis team continues to have another successful season. Again, we are able to have this incredible athletic success due to our new facilities, such as the relatively new track, which was a few years back, the tennis courts and the softball field, which is brand new this season. Our student council has also been very active. Last Friday, they hosted Kids Night Out, in which over 100 young children from the community were allowed to play and have fun in the high school gyms, of course, under the supervision of a few student council members uh, for the evening. This upcoming uh, Sunday, May 7th, a portion of a uh, student council will be walking through Boston as a part for the Walk for Hunger. This is a short walk hosted by uh, Project Bread, of which student council will walk 10 miles to bring awareness to the issue of hunger in local communities. Elections for student council members and class officers, such as class president, will occur the week of May 22nd, uh, with sign up and signature forms being released on May 8th. So those elections are a lot sooner you may seen. Senior class officers have also begun to sell prom tickets. On Monday, June 5th, senior prom will take place at the Burlington Marriott. Despite the end of the school year rapidly approaching, there are still numerous academic matters. On May 15th, Student Recognition Awards will take place at the High School Performing Arts Center. At an invite-only ceremony here, teachers will present an award to a student from each subject, recognizing academic achievement, teamwork, and other character traits that support the high school's core values of citizenship, leadership through service, and lifelong learning. Lastly, AP tests have begun, and I can tell you, they're really not fun in the slightest. <laughs> Spending 8 a.m. to 11.30 taking a test is not how you want to start a Monday, or any day of the week, really. In conclusion, I, on behalf of the rest of the student representatives and the student body, would like to thank Mr. Bowers for, an excellent, for his excellent years of service on the school committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I go now? <laughs> I also have a... Uh, You're off duty. <laughs> I have a piece of student work here, which was a research paper I wrote about World War II for my history class, and uh, it has a rubric here. You don't have to read through the whole thing, it's pretty long, but I just will pass that around if you'd like to look at that. And that really helped us demonstrate, you know, helped us learn how to gather lots of research from various sources, as well as to articulate it well in a piece of, in a paper that really arguments, that, ar that argues our thesis and talks about that. Any questions for Michael? Go ahead, Jerry. Michael, good job. Excellent. Was that your first time you reported? Or did you uh, I've reported before? a few times before. Few times? okay. But um, I just wanted to, follow up on what you said, we hosted the uh, Division IV um, relays here on Sunday, and it was an absolute beehive of activity, Ooh. and it's kind of a, uh, uh, an honor to, to be able to host this. I think it's about probably the third time we've done it, but the new fields came into play. I mean, we had the new discus area that we just finished. Yes. Uh, the javelin, javelin was done, I think, on the new all-purpose field. Correct. Uh, track up. The reason we do so well in the pole vault is there are towns that don't have those types of facilities, and we have the opportunity to, to train our kids on those, in those facilities. The boys absolutely dominated the meet. I think they won by 30 points, and the girls did almost as well. So not only did we host them, but we won yeah. you know, both boys and girls titles. Um, so again, I just wanted to highlight that for mm. 
And it's not just athletic. I mean, athletics, the fields and the, uh, you know, different facilities are excellent to, you know, promote our athletics. But we also have, you know, all these new facilities in the school to promote, you know, technology learning, performing arts. I mean, everything is just so brand new. It's so much better and amplifies all learning experiences and athletic experiences. Yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> it reminds me of the, uh, the old uh, saying, build it and they will come. Mm -hmm. As my daughter says, geez, Dad, you waited until I graduated, so you <laughs> built a new school. I hear that probably uh, once, once a month. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you very I much. Thank you tomorrow if you want. Okay. Uh, I think we'll go on to, and go with our agenda a little out of uh, order. Uh, we'll take up new business uh, next and go on to our uh, vote on the fiscal 2018 budget. Mr. Chairman, before uh, before Mr. Connolly starts with the, the the kind of the nuts and bolts of the presentation, I, I want to take a moment to um, to just extend some appreciation to folks that have been um, integrally involved with the um, development of the fiscal year 2018 budget. It has been um, not so much untypical of other years uh, in terms of the um, of the length of the budget development process, but. Um, I do think we faced this year, um, I would say, some kind of lengthening challenges where um, we were really working diligently with a lot of folks to, um, to kind of bring about a presentation for you tonight, um, which is a balanced budget um, for what we're labeling as level services. So I do want to just acknowledge certainly the members of the school committee, all of you and Mr. Webster, who, who's not here tonight, um, for the support that you've given um, to the administrative staff. Uh, in the budget development, and particularly the time that you spend at, at the uh, workshops to um, to really um, to work with us, roll up your sleeves, do the hard work, and also I think um, I think Michael would agree. I know Michael would agree that we feel a great um, a great deal of respect from all of you um, for um, supporting our ideas, and and I, I appreciate that more than than I could convey to you in just a few words tonight. And similarly, we work um, very collaboratively with the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee uh, representatives to the Finance Planning Team. Uh, we presented to the Finance Committee just last Wednesday um, the budget update, and um, you know that Finance Planning Team is uh, is also just a very good, uh, dedicated, hardworking uh, group of people that I think you know are are very understanding of the challenges that we face um, presently um, and as we look to the future and, and does do um, all that they can do in order to help us support um, our best work. The town administrator, Michael Gilberto, and the town fin finance director, uh, Liz Rourke, serve as members of the finance planning team. They, too, uh, you know, we have, we have a very good working relationship with the two of them, Michael and I do, and um, we speak, uh, particularly around this time of year, extensively with them, regularly with them, to try and, um, you know, kind of convince them, not that it takes an awful lot of convincing, but to, to articulate, I think, where, where uh, we want the school district to go. And, uh, and they are very, very supportive and work very hard with us um, as well. The last, uh, the last folks I want to thank are the, are the staff, um, the, the administrative council, the students, uh, faculty, all of our staff that um, I do try to, to do uh, my best to communicate with them the status of the budget development process as it's ongoing. In fact, I'll be sending out a, a third communication tomorrow um, following this meeting uh, tonight. And I appreciate um, what, they, what they do in terms of uh, supporting the mission of this district. They play a very integral role no matter what the job is to, to really um, help us do our very best work on behalf of the, the students of the district. And then lastly, I would just acknowledge certainly, uh, probably most importantly, the citizens of the town, the taxpayers of the community that um, have demonstrated, I think, year after year, their strong support of public education in this town. I often say that um, that this school, this campus, middle school, high school campus, is um, is uh, a testament, I think, to the to the dedication of the um, the taxpayers of this town and their support for public edu education. So a lot of people are involved in a in a months long budget development process, and I felt it was important to um, to just articulate um, to all of them and to all of you uh, my appreciation for that support. So with that, um, we do have a, a brief presentation for you tonight that stems from <clears throat> the work of the two budget workshops um, that were held, one in March, one in April, um, as well as the public hearing um, and the feedback that we, um, we gathered from that uh, hearing on April 10th to present to you um, our recommended budget um, to be presented and, and hopefully ultimately adopted at the town meeting on June 5th. So 
With that, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Connolly. Great. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. So, um, as Mr. Bernard just stated, a lot has happened over the course of the last week with the school department budget. Um, we've certainly been, been a busy week last week as we had several meetings to try to work to bring the budget to a conclusion and certainly within balance. And I think that actually began with uh, last Monday morning. We had a meeting with the finance planning team and there was significant movement on the, on the revenue plan that certainly helped um, you know, bring the budget or certainly minimize the, the existing budget gap that was discussed and talked about um, at the public hearing and throughout the preliminary budget process in March and at the public hearing uh, on April 10th. So that was certainly appreciative. It was, as Mr. Bernard just alluded to, everyone in this that was certainly on that list in the prior slide and members of the finance planning team, board of selectmen and so forth worked very, very hard over those coming weeks to, to find and, and fine tune um, the, the revenue plan to, to minimize any existing budget gap or potential reduction. So I think we um, you know, worked hard after that meeting at the budget workshop to identify the remaining changes that would kind of need to take place to, to recommend a, a balanced budget for fiscal year 2018. Um, just, I'll just highlight for a moment some of those changes in that revenue plan. Uh, there was, uh, on the revenue side of the equation, there was some additional revenue that was identified through the House budget. So you had the, the governor's budget and the House budget was released um, in, in late April. And they identified some additional funds towards Chapter 70, additional $10 per pupil um, of Chapter 70, which netted some additional revenue. Um, there was some additional revenue identified through free crash, through savings in the snow and ice budget that was moved into the revenue plan that helped, helped increase some of the revenue. Um, and then on the expense equation, there was some savings on the fixed cost side of the, of the expense, expenses in, in, in the revenue plan, mainly in the regional school assessments. Our projected anticipated enrollment for students enrolled in the Essex uh, Aggie vocational school uh, declined, netting some savings, and then the anticipated general liability and workers' comp insurance um, netted some savings as well. So these are several factors related to helping identify some additional revenue. And that led us to what is presented on this slide, what was discussed at the budget workshop last Monday afternoon. And um, just re refresher, I'll just remind everyone we had previously recommended an FY18 budget of a little over 29 million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and sixty eight. That was a little over one point four million dollars. Um, that would have been a five point one percent increase over fiscal uh, 2017. Um, the available revenue as of April 24th at the conclusion of the finance planning team meeting last Monday evening. Um, would have produced a budget of 29633545 So that difference, um, which was a, would have been a 3.8% budget increase, so that difference is 366.43. So we headed into the budget workshop, we were certainly working from uh, you know, much smaller numbers, which were certainly appreciative of those efforts, but certainly uh, all very much challenging to certainly identify uh, you know, reductions to bring the, the budget into balance. Um, so as a refresher, as a reminder, this uh, slide highlights the recommendations that the administrative team presented to the school committee at the budget workshop on the afternoon of April 24th. Um, I'll just highlight a few on the list. We had discussed uh, the potential of moving to a hybrid, a combined kindergarten model at the Hood Elementary School that would be combining a full day, half day program. If we were to do that, we would not need to hire an additional 0.5 half-day kindergarten teacher, which would net savings in a little over $31,000. Uh, as you recall, throughout this process, we were working with our strategic plan, NRPS 2021 document, to identify some new initiatives um, and some new positions, um, 2.9 FTE positions. Um, it was the administration's recommendation that we were not uh, you know, make any further either personnel reductions uh, beyond um, to fund these new positions, although we, we certainly felt these new positions were high priority positions identified in our strategic plan. So these uh, 2.9 FTE positions in total 
um, with net savings of 184, 788, and we would kind of defer the funding of these positions. Um, the next several line items discussed was essentially uh, kind of squeezing some expense budgets, um, you know, sharpening the pencils again and reducing school and district um, operating budgets. Um, you know, I think it was the conversation at the Monday evening that this would be certainly a big challenge for the school principals and uh, directors and department budget leaders to, again, try to continue to do more with less and, and make some further expense reductions. Certainly, there's an element of additional risk associated with these reductions, but we certainly felt we would certainly make, make these work. Uh, we talked about the food service program throughout the budget process, and that was certainly something that we're very proud of. And, um, the, the strides in the, that the food service program has made over the last four to five years. We are very close to operating a, a break-even self-sufficient program. Um, and what this $20,000 line item was, is that there was $20,000 remaining that we were carrying in the general fund to help supplement any loss that the food service program had incurred. Um, and eliminating this line item essentially would uh, need to be fully sufficient in operating the break-even program next year, having no subsidy from the general fund or operating budget. I mean, everything would have to be funded by the revenue, of, you know, federal and state sources, and the, and the sales from the food service program, all, all of the expenses. So again, some additional associated <coughs> risks with this line item reduction. Um, we then uh, recommended a reduction of some summer student cleaning crew in the tune of $10,000. So. This line, this is a $30,000 line item that would be, would be reduced to $20,000. Um, once again, uh, we have some line items in the budget for extraordinary maintenance and for small capital and equipment to help fund some, you know, unforeseen, you know, maintenance item that may come up. There was a small line item of $10,000. This would eliminate that line <coughs> item. And then uh, we were actually looking to restore our small capital and equipment budgets to help fund some small capital requests that don't qualify for the large capital um, you know, process um, and some equipment line items. This $15,000 was actually eliminated two years ago and we're looking to restore that amount back into the budget and this reduction would defer that restoration of those line items. Um, the next item on the list was we have a, uh, actually we have a retirement in the Building and Grounds Department and one potential Solution to identify some savings would be to restructure that position into, um, you know, into a van driver position, and that would net a little bit of, of, of savings of about approximately twenty thousand dollars. The next two items on this list that would uh, complete the um, the list to bring us within balanced budget would essentially making some changes to our revenue assumptions um, of our bus revolving account. As you know, we charge a fee for. Um, for parents that don't qualify for free busing, but to participate in the optional busing program, we've relied over the last three or four years on, you know, carryover funds in that revolving account, and this would increase that our reliance on those funds for another year, and then um, making changing our assumption of our facility rental and tuition and the, the user fees that we bring in when we rent space. We have seen a significant increase in that revenue, and particularly because of this building. Uh, performing Arts Center in particular and brought in additional revenue, so we would increase that line item offset that helps offset um, the variety of maintenance line items by $10,000. So um, I think it's fair to say you know, this certainly was a challenging list to put together, um, but we felt this, would ha this was the least harmful you know, list of redu reductions that would certainly, first and foremost, we would try to protect the the classroom experience and the educational experience, and certainly there was a priority as well to avoid any you know, staffing reductions or personnel reductions. And uh, you know, although challenging to put these items on this list, and any item would be, and to as well as to defer our new initiatives uh, in the NRPS 2021 plan. Um, you know, we we felt this was um, you know our, we were prepared to make this recommendation to the school committee making these reductions would bring the budget certainly within balance. Um, so what can we conclude from the FY18 budget? Um, certainly not the budget we desired, but that being said, it does certainly you know, make, have some, does accomplish in what we conclude. It certainly allows the district to meet its contractual obligations with employees and employee unions. 
It includes some additional staffing to provide full day kindergarten for each student and family who wants it. So we made a commitment to do that. So this, this does, this budget does achieve an additional two positions, um, a teacher and paraprofessional position to add a third full day kindergarten section to provide each student and family who wants full day kindergarten uh, to, to, to experience that. Um, it does include increase in operational costs to ensure adequate preventive maintenance measures are in place to maintain the middle school and high school campus. So we've seen, we've, we've learned a lot over the last two or three years, we've certainly seen the need to increase our, our maintenance line items, um, bring in some service agreements, certainly in the area of HVAC is uh, equipment, heating and cooling equipment, and this budget would accomplish that. Um, unfortunately, it does include a reduction of our operating budgets for the five schools in the district. That was probably the hard, you know, definitely one of the, the more challenging items to experience um, to, uh, to on, the, on the prior list. Um, but we do feel, despite the operating budget reductions, it does allow the district to maintain level services. Again, we avoid staffing reductions and it does protect the educational experience for students. Um, all that being said, um, certainly with any budget, there's some inherent risk in that um, list of reductions, additional reductions to break the budget in balance, certainly added to the, to our associated you know, financial risks when we um, you know, develop the FY18 budget. Um, the potential for additional outside placements is always a possibility, and that certainly would exist. That's probably the one of the biggest volatility and variables in any school department budget. Uh, we continue to rely on some one-time, um, certainly revenue sources or carryover sources. Um, you know, we're continuing to rely on our prepayment of special education tuitions to help you know offset our expenses in the following year. Um, projected carryover revenue in some of our revolving accounts, like transportation and uh, and so forth, all put additional kind of pressure on subsequent budget years. Um, but we certainly make these assumptions and uh, recommendations as, um, you know, as calculated as we can. Um, we certainly, again, for the second straight year, have a, have a relatively um, aggressive estimated teacher attrition savings. You know, if that savings is not to be realized, we might have a, you know, a budgetary shortfall uh, in fiscal 18. Uh, reducing the small capital equipment and extraordinary maintenance line items, as well as increasing reliance on facility rental you know, funds to help offset the budget does limit the district's ability to address any uh, kind of unforeseen or emergency maintenance issues. Um, there's always a possibility that some of the assumptions that we made in the state budget with what the House has, um, has forecasted may not be fully funded um, and that you know, our revenue offsets won't be achieved. And then certainly the food service program, although we're certainly um, you know, very pleased with the performance over the last four or five years, though at that performance can be difficult to predict with enrollment and so forth. So um, there's certainly some associated risk with the budget that we <coughs> have recommended this evening. Um, but that being said, I think, you know, I think it's fair to say that you know, a lot of hard work and preparation have gone into <coughs> developing the FY18 budget over the last several months, as Mr. Bernard alluded to earlier. Um, and though we, you know, none of us certainly wanted to see that list of reductions presented earlier, of about you know, one point you know two percent reductions from really what we really wanted to be in, you know, back in uh, you know March and April, um, you know we do feel that you know those are you know the reductions that has the full support of the administrative team. So we would be prepared this evening to to recommend a a budget of a 3.8% increase over fiscal 2017, which would be a budget of 29,633,545, um, with a little more than a million dollar increase over fiscal 17. So with that being said, I'll, I'll open up to any um, you know, conversation from the school community, or we perhaps make a motion. You wanna make a motion? Um, yeah, I just wanna make a comment first. Uh, as Mr. Conley said, I, I too wanna thank the Board of Select and the Finance Committee, the School Committee, the Administration, Administrative Team, uh, and the Finance Planning Team for working so hard to get us to a balanced budget. But again, I think I probably, uh, my colleagues will agree with me, we're not happy with this budget. This is level services pretty much because we haven't had to reduce any personnel, and that's why we're calling it level services. But we're really backing into this budget. We're making cuts that are basically smoke and mirrors as far as trying to get to this bottom line number. 
uh, and we're not making the type of progress I think that we necessarily should as far as um, you know adding uh, additional uh, classes and reducing class size and things of that nature by backing into this budget so while I'm going to vote for it I'm not happy about it I am I am uh, thankful that everybody works so well together to get to this point but it's it's really not satisfactory so. I would have to agree um, last year I was working more closely with doing the budget and it, it appears that um, sometimes we almost wait five three to five years to get something that we should have had three to five years sooner and we finally get it because it's a have to situation guidance counselors um, things of that nature so it's it's sad to think that we can't do more so I agree with Jerry well the budget is yes. met um, it's done so unfortunately I, I echo Janine and Jerry's comments and I just hope that you know these kind of risks that we're taking that you know nothing will arise that will greatly impact you know other areas of the budget over the course of the year it won't take much to throw us out of balance just uh, I think I if I could mr. chairman I think you know certainly I think more so than any other year um, we are the most uncomfortable with the level yeah. of risk um, that we have with this recommendation I just I would remind you that we went through a similar exercise last year to the tune of about hundred and twenty thousand dollars and so here we are now about hundred and eighty thousand dollars when you take out the new positions we were hoping to to secure so our ability to um, to offset maybe an unanticipated expense has really um, I think been significantly compromised this going into next year and I don't I'm not setting off any alarm I just I feel as I have in other public meetings made an acknowledgement that we uh, feel it's important and almost and it's responsible the responsible thing to do for us to acknowledge that um, there is more risk um, with this recommended budget than than we are comfortable with but as Michael said we were <clears throat> when we went through the the work to to arrive where we are tonight it was it was it has been and, 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 and is today and, and I hope always will be um, we, we, we worked very hard to preserve the classroom experience for, for students and to, and to um, I'll say eliminate or certainly at least minimize any impact that might be felt there. We, we took the educational program as our highest priority and while um, there are cuts being made, we feel that the, um, the, the impact of those will be felt more at the administrative level um, than they certainly will be at the teacher or student or classroom level. Yes. So, but I, I, I appreciate the comments that have been made. We we share the belief. You know, we we, we go through a great deal of um, of work to, to craft um, what I think is an extremely detailed and comprehensive strategic plan, a five-year strategic plan that enjoys the the community support, um, the school committee support, and the support of the staff. And to not make any movement in a positive direction next year with the acquisition of any new positions which would in, ter in turn translate to new programs um, is disappointing but I, I think we, we very early on acknowledged the, the fiscal constraints that we were going into with fiscal year 18 yeah. and the available revenues and, and I certainly you know what I'm saying right now is not meant to to express any level of, of disrespect for anyone I we, we are understanding of the situation but we do think that there needs to be um, something to, that, 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 that changes in order for us to advance not only what we need to do but the things that we would like to do because we believe philosophically that the, 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 the academic and co-curricular experience of students from kindergarten through grade 12 is has been you know very important in this community and I think um, we have an obligation to I think raise awareness for that and my hope is that as we look at the fiscal 19 uh, budget development not not that far off that um, we might be in, you know, confronted with some of the similar conversations that we're having right now. And, and just by doing that earlier, can maybe you know, start to think about how we might be able to not be in this situation um, in the next year or two, so. Well, my comments on it are that uh, this is the ninth budget that I've seen um, since I've been on the school committee. And it's the worst of all that I can remember. Um, 
the constraints are, are con just, they're compounded every year. Uh, where there was a letter in the transcript that said, suggested that we go to zero-based budgeting. First off, I can't imagine doing that in a, a school system because the, the whole basis that you have is what, you, what worked last year. And because we are always constrained by the revenue, we don't just kind of spend up to the revenue that's available. Um, I, I just uh, I take real I issue with that letter. But this is the best that we can do. Um, we have uh, limited, limited resources in town. Uh, hopefully in a couple, three years, we'll have uh, the influence of uh, the, the Berry property mm -hmm. development, and that will bring new revenue to the town, and that will uh, help us through these hard times. I've, I've watched the, the um, uh, expense budget diminish, I think, virtually every year out of those nine, and it wasn't real flush when it started. So I think, uh, I think that we, uh, we, we've, we've worked hard to get to where we are. We've had lots of cooperation from other townsfolk. Uh, I've uh, extolled the virtues of the finance planning team to every other school committee person that I've met uh, outside of, of North Reading. And uh, I think it works well, but uh, somehow we'll probably muddle through with this year as well, but it is not, it's not pretty. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd move to, i move that the school committee approve and adopt the final FY18 school operating budget of $29,633,000. $545 that represents an increase of 3.8% or $1,087,403 over the fiscal year 17 appropriation of $28,546,142. So the budget I'm moving to adopt is $29,633,545. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? The only thing I want to say again, I want to make it clear to everybody that the administration worked extremely hard to keep our staffing uh, constant, that we did not lose any people, that we did not let any people go, that there are no layoffs, and they worked very hard to do that, uh, despite some real pressure from the school committee and to look at some other educational uh, alternatives. So uh, I want to commend them on uh, the hard work that they did to, uh, again, to, to keep all of our people in place who are doing such a good job for us across the board. I'm talking about you know, faculty, staff, everybody that's uh, including the people that are sitting here tonight, uh, for their good work that gets us through every single fiscal year. But it's, it's tough. One of these days, we're going to have to start looking at some alternatives. But fortunately, this year, we were able to get through the year and, and keep all of everybody in place. So uh, that's one positive thing about this budget. I guess I have one more comment. If the state would pony up for their share and put out the $2 billion a year that they, they have as a shortfall, all of us would be in a whole lot better situation. I, unfortunately, in this town, we have one guy to go, two guys to go to when they're on our side. But yeah. uh, the, rest of, the rest of the state needs to get, get with the program. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Okay. I guess we go back to continued business. Uh, MSBA, SSBC update. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So <laughs> a few things to, uh, to update the committee on. Um, Punch, work on the punch list continues. Uh, Manafort was on site um, the week of uh, April the 18th to address all of the, uh, or be, to begin to address all of the remaining punch list items exclusive of the uh, non-drainage uh, punch list items. And some of the work that was, uh, was addressed is um, uh, in the area of the softball and multi-purpose fields with um, addressing some of the uh, soil erosion. 
Um, there was a, a soft bench at the softball field that was loose. Um, there was some stickers remaining on some of the hardware down there that's been removed. Um, the new handicap curb cuts and repaving in those areas. Um, there was some loam and crushed stone that had still been stored over in the area of the wastewater treatment plant that was removed as well as some uh, stakes and silt sacks that had been in place during the, um, the major construction portion of the project. Um, the Silktown roofing has been on site. You, um, there were a couple of um, minor leaks in the roof, um, but they have been addressed and resolved, I'm happy to say, uh, having, having caused uh, no damage. Um, they also did some work to realign canopies, kind of the uh, aluminum canopies at the main entrances of the, uh, both the middle school and the high school. The repairs to the drainage system, uh, they began really um, in earnest on uh, Tuesday, April the 18th. <coughs> that was the day that um, Dow, the Dow company was on site to, um, to conduct their own mandrel testing of the drainage system. And that took uh, two days, uh, the 18th and the 19th, a Tuesday and a Wednesday of that week. And then on Thursday is when the, um, the actual work uh, began and it continues, uh, continues today. Um, I learned uh, today that starting tomorrow, I'm not sure for exactly how long, but they are doubling their manpower um, to stop uh, addressing some of the outstanding concerns with the drainage system in the hope of, of, of resolving things um, sooner rather than later. We have gotten a lot of cooperation with uh, parents coming to the building and obeying the um, restrictions on the uh, access to the middle and high school during the school day once student drop-off um, has, has been completed and before student dismissal. Um, the work is continuing after student dismissal until uh, dusk. Um, we have had one Saturday worth of work. Um, it's likely that there will be some work um, this coming Saturday. That's kind of on an as-needed basis and depending upon what's going on on campus. But, um, you know, still, still a good amount of work to, uh, to be completed, but um, they, are, they are working diligently to address the outstanding concerns with respect to the drainage system. You may have seen, and Mr. Venezia, you referenced that it was used uh, on Saturday, which was nice. Uh, the new disc, discus pad uh, was in, installed for the uh, track and field team, and then we worked with the um, local DPW to install um, the sleeves for the, for the netting that was purchased as part of a fundraising effort by the uh, high school boys and girls track team, as well as um, the landscaping, <coughs> the, kind of the loaming and seeding of the adjacent areas from when the concrete was installed. It was an outstanding uh, painting uh, need of a gas line in the area of the do uh, loading dock that has been addressed. The uh, MON company, MON company, was on uh, was on site the week of April 24th to begin um, kind of doing an inventory and assessment of the um, outstanding landscaping needs. And I would just I would want to remind folks that we have not accepted the landscaping, so we still have a one year period from the date of acceptance for warranty items. So that that clock has not started um, has not started ticking. Um, and I just listed for you some of the work that has been done and some of which uh, is, is uh, due to be done um, with respect to the landscaping. So there was some mowing, some trimming and removing of weeds. Um, there was um, an identification of some areas that need to be slice seeded and hydro seeded, some of the sloped areas that you see around the campus and down leading toward the, um, toward the new fields, the hill. Um, there was some soil erosion over the course of the winter. Um, they've begun to identify uh, plantings that are uh, needing to be replaced. Um, they believe that a good number of the trees are, um, the flowering trees particularly, are budding and looking good, but that they have identified a number that do need to be replaced. And then there are some that are more obvious. Um, I'll call them kind of like the scrub pines, or you know, they're, they're, they're dead, they're brown, so they, they, they died from, um, you know, I'm assuming either you know, a poor winter or you know, a harsh winter or a lack of water when they were originally planted. But um, there is a, a plan to address uh, all of the outstanding um, uh, landscaping uh, items by May 30th. That is at least the schedule um, <coughs> for now. <clears throat> um, and I think that's all I had with respect to the building project, unless anyone had any questions. Okay. Any questions? No, I just comment on what John said, that we haven't accepted the landscaping. We won't accept the landscaping until we're 100% satisfied with what, uh, what has been done mm -hmm. out there. Uh, it's been a long battle with them, but they're going to keep coming back and they're going to keep fixing it until it's um, until it's done right. So, I agree. I, I should add too that I do have, if not daily contact, but right now it is it has been daily for you know last uh, last few weeks, particularly around the preparations for addressing the drainage system. But I have a, a daily meeting of a varying length with um, representatives of Gilbane and PMA too. So the level of communications is still there. Um, and that's a good thing. 
Nice to see they haven't gone away. No, no, they're here. Uh, next item on our agenda is the Walter S. Splint School Fund and the Alice G. Holt LD Bachelor School Fund. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I think this is kind of a, a kind of a joint. Uh, Great presentation to you between uh, Mr. Connolly and I, but you might we're we're, we're asking to revisit um, the presentation that we had made um, to you. Um, I believe it was March 27th when we were at the Hood School, and it was a meeting that followed um, the March 6th uh, presentation by two of the trustees of trusts for the town, where they identified uh, funds that were available through um, uh, wills that had been left. Uh, gifts to the town through wills of people who had deceased um, many, many years ago. And so <clears throat> what, uh, what, what Mr. Connolly and I have done is um, we've worked to identify what we think are, are some sources, um, uh, some, some projects that we would like the source of these funds to, um, to contribute to. So what we've put together for you here is um, the balance, um, just as a reminder, the balance in the two funds. The Walter Flint Fund has right now uh, an expendable balance of $35,285.03. Um, the provision in the gentleman's will was that um, it would always maintain a balance of $10,000 and the interest earned on it could be, could be used um, for um, school-related purposes to the benefit of the children of the school. And the Alice G. Holt L.D. Batchelder School uh, Recreation Fund. I should add, by the way, that both of these funds have been um, accessed in the past uh, for various projects, but the Walter Flynn Fund, not for, not for quite some time, is my understanding. And the Alice G. Holt L.D. Batchelder School uh, Recreation Fund has an expendable balance of $901.21. So <clears throat> what we um, are recommending to you is uh, we do still have an outstanding balance on the middle school, high school uh, new fields project, the sod and irrigation project of the softball diamond and the uh, all-purpose field. So it would be um, our recommendation, hope you yeah. right, it's our, our recommendation that uh, of the $35,285.03 in the Walter Flynn Fund, that all but 6,000 of that be used to offset um, the outstanding balance on that new fields project and also to be um, used toward purchasing some of the um, ancillary equipment that we feel is needed. Um, the bleachers at the softball diamond, we're looking at potentially uh, a dugout um, cover for the two dugouts. Um, and we also, um, as part of the athletic subcommittee, identify the need for um, two gates to be installed to um, kind of do a better job of identifying the line of demarcation, so to speak, of the dugouts to just public access. So that's one recommendation. And I think Michael probably can tell you exactly the amount, but we have about a $22,000 outstanding. Yeah, it's about, debt. Um, so it's $24,822 you know, at the moment, so. So we could offset that um, outstanding yeah. amount, as well as use some of the money toward purchasing some of the other um, equipment that's needed. Mm -hmm. And then we're, we're recommending to you that the remaining $6,000 <clears> of that uh, $35,285.03 be coupled with um, some funds that are available through um, rental, facility rentals, rental of spaces, particularly in the middle high school campus. So we're, we're proposing that we would um, take $6,000 from the Walter Flint Fund, couple that with $6,000 from the facility rentals fund, um, and make a contribution of $12,000 for uh, the purchase of additional microphones um, and related technology purposes and uh, purchases in the Performing Arts Center. Um, as part of this building project, there were um, a number of lot, what they call lavalier mics, the kind of the headless wireless microphones that the student actors use. Um, it's no secret, I don't think, to anyone that we have a very robust theater program and just have the need for more microphones. Um, and currently, they get rented, and they're not they're not cheap. They're not cheap to rent, and they're certainly not cheap to buy. But um, we think that $12,000 can go a long way toward adding to our um, current um, stash, if you will, John, of John, what is the purchase price for those microphones? They're about $1,000. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, which is why there hasn't been an opportunity sure. to, to purchase them, you know, just outright. And we feel that this, this amount of money, I think, gives, it can make a difference because we're, we're going to be able to purchase a good number of them. 
And then secondly, I did have a conversation, I don't have as much specific information on what the purchase might be, but I did have a conversation with uh, Mr. Colleen, the principal at the Batchelder School, and also Mrs. Weiss, um, the physical education teacher um, at the Batchelder School, and to tell them that I was going to be making a recommendation to the school committee on um, making these funds of the $901.21 available <coughs> for a, a purchase of a physical education related um, piece of equipment, um, and, and you know, should that be uh, adopted by the school committee that, 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 that they might want to start thinking about what might they might, might what they want to buy um, for the bachelor students so our recommendations are um, I think you know in the in the third uh, column of the of the of the memo that you've been issued um, and I think it probably would require a vote mr. chairman um, if you agree Do I have a motion uh, mr. chairman I'd move to allocate from the Walter S. Flint School Fund, the amount of $29,285.03 uh, towards the construction of the new athletic fields at North Reading Middle and High School and the purchase of ancillary equipment. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> aye, aye. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I'd also move to allocate from the Walter S. Flint School Fund the amount of $6,000 to be combined with a contribution of $6,000 from the facilities rentals account to the theater program at North Reading Middle School High School for microphones and related technology purposes. Second. Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Do you want to do that? One more? Do you want to do the, do you want to do the bachelor? If you, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd move to allocate $901.21 from the Alice G. Holt LD Batchelder School Recreation Fund uh, to be spent at the Batchelder School in a way to be determined, I think, by the administration and the, and the principal. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right, second. second. Yeah. Made and seconded further discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the superintendent's evaluation. And Ms. Embriano and Whoopi will have. Okay. Um, <coughs> I'll take the lead on this one. Here's your original one. Um, I believe one of the members asked to have their got, original one. I got a watermark on it now. Oh, I think I gave you two. <laughs> I think the, oh, that's I think the, the, my printer printed it off yeah, for me. The Sorry. Toner. Um, that one's yours. Thank you. Um, overall, we found that you um, met your obligations as a superintendent, so we'll keep you on for another year. <laughs> Thank um, you. you did rate proficient with um, exemplary being hit a couple of times as well, so I'll probably go over that. Um, the standards that he was. Uh, uh, can't think of the word judged on or evaluated on that's the word was instructional leadership management and operations of which he received proficient and standard three for family and community engagement he got an exemplary can't talk and professional culture um, again on proficient and then within those standards were a bunch of things that added up to whether it was proficient or um, higher or lower um, I don't think that he fell below proficient on anything. Some of the comments um, had to do with the effort that he put into on the SSBC and the little school project, um, how professional he is and how much of a breath of fresh air, for lack of you know, better word, um, he is to work with within those boundaries. Um, the hard work that he puts into um, working with the administration team and things that he has brought to the district, um, full integration of the new schools, the extensive use of the facilities, the global, global child foreign language pro, um, program, how the batch was honored at the state house, efforts to increase the social and emotional space, and coordinated regional looks at school times, um, possibly the change of, even though that's probably years in the making, he still has put the effort into finding out. And once again, the little school roof. Um, 
He continues to be a hardworking educational leader. He models and expects high standards for all of the schools in the district. Um, he continues to cultivate valuable educational programs and partnerships like with Merrimack College. And he appreciates the work that the teachers do and he welcomes opportunities to witness their efforts in the um, classroom. I'm not gonna read everything, just kind of highlight little pieces of it. Um, and that was for the standard of, oh, overall. Mm -hmm. And then for the standard of instructional leadership, once again, he got a proficient and some of the comments was um, that he, we have seen improvements in the use of the data and coordinated um, data teams, i.e. the digital learning model is um, starting to like take its root and in, in, um, showing um, a lot of positive movement. Um, there was some concern over what seems to be the evaluation system. While it works, maybe there's a little bit overload on the ones who have to do all of the evaluations. Um, he's used his knowledge of, knowledge of leadership from having been the high school principal and he's grown into the, the leadership and has become an effective superintendent. He maintains positive relationships with the administration council members and based on, um, it's something called the NSIP and I don't remember, like national. New, new superintendent induction program. There you go. Um, they rated him very high in all areas of um, leadership as well. And under management and operations, once again, he got proficient. Some of the highlighted things are, he makes good process on dealing with the social and emotional learning issues. John and his team do a great job. The budget document is always thorough and meets the district's needs but insufficient funding, as we've just learned, um, usually holds us back. Without having a human resource director, John does an excellent job with recruiting and hiring process. He's very knowledgeable in law, ethics, and policies, and he sets a high but reasonable goal for the district. Um, the superintendent, along with the administrative council, works very hard to create a thorough yet reasonable budget uh, his work to create a comprehensive strategic plan is greatly appreciated and just the amount of detail that he puts into the budget and shares with the other town entities um, goes a long way. And then for family and community engagement, I believe this is where he got his highest, where um, he actually got the exemplary instead of just proficient. And says John continues has continued and expands a very high level of communication initiated by his pre predecessor. And the continuation of the level of communication to all stakeholders is a substantial benefit to the district. Um, I believe John is an incredible communicator. The weekly articles and the transcript are extremely helpful. He'd still like to see, sorry, would still like to see a district Facebook page, but the use of social media, Twitter, and the new district website has improved the digital outreach. Um, there's not heard, I have not heard one negative comment from the community at large regarding John's overall performance. Great communicator, is sincere, listens in earnest, and has an open door policy. And lastly, the superintendent is very visible in the community. He positively supports academics and extracurricular student activities. He is responsive to concerns from families and community members, and he has worked with varied town-wide groups to bring meaningful events to the community. His quarterly newsletters, newsletter is comprehensive and well-received by stakeholders. And that's why he got an exemplary. And then the professional culture, again, he got a proficient. John constantly pushes for high performance and works closely with the administrative council to make it happen. John is an excellent communicator and 
make, always makes it clear where he stands on an issue and what he wants to accomplish. The superintendent meets regularly with building principals to discuss and, and reflect upon the building's improvement plans and overall needs. His communica communication skills are solid and he represents the district well. And so overall, he does a very good job. And that's it. Any comments? I want to thank Julie and Janine because that's really hard work. This was mostly work. Janine's <laughs> undertaking. Yeah, but good job, Janine. I think it went it very well. So I want to apologize for my not putting in as much input into this as I should have or could have. But, uh, it's, it, the, these evaluation forms almost make it impossible to go through the forms to give somebody an exemplary uh, rating. It makes it very difficult. So for John uh, to have an exemplary in one category and proficient, when you hear proficient, it doesn't sound like it's much above what you would expect. I don't like the word, to be honest with you, because I think John's doing a, an exemplary job in almost every single aspect of the superintendent's position. I really feel that way. Um, and I think I gave him some high marks, and I think we all did, actually. But to say proficient doesn't do just cause to, I think, the job that John's doing. And not only John, but the entire administrative team, mm. along with Patrick and Michael and uh, Cynthia and everybody. So, um, you know, I, I wholeheartedly support the overall evaluation that was given to John. I wish, uh, again, we could do something more than proficient, <laughs> but, good. but these forms are uh, almost impossible to deal with. So. Actually, the form... Uh, has has the four categories listed, and they and three of them are in a normal font, and one of them is about three times the size. <laughs> the one that's three times the the size font is the one that says proficient. It came came from uh, D E S E, and uh, like we uh, li like they they really they're really trying to make the point that proficient. It's really good. Yeah. But it doesn't so. sound good when you yeah. say proficient. <laughs> Those of us that are evaluated under a tool, because this is a similar rating scale yeah. with the teachers, we all feel that way. Yeah. We wish the well, word it, were a little I mean, different. If you think of statewide assessment also and our goals for schools, I mean, Correct. that's just been mm -hmm. the right. trend of the Department of Ed. That's right. So, you know, yeah. while some may look at the word proficient as, you know, not preferred, um, I think it's. A job well done. Yeah, I, I agree. I guess since, since since it's my last day on the job, I can truly criticize the Department of Elementary <laughs> Education in public. What, what about the rest of us? <laughs> the rest Cliff, of you can do what you want to do. Cliff, I do that, and I'm still here. <laughs> You're stuck here for another year. But you might not be next year. <laughs> That's fine with me. <laughs> That's what happens when you uh, wrap your big brother. No, you're doing a great job, John. It doesn't necessarily I appreciate translate it. Thank into you. a race, but it's a good job. <laughs> All right. So I, I remember when uh, when your predecessor, Kathy Willis, was hired. One of our uh, highest uh, requirements, uh, most important requirements, is that she be a communicator. And in fact, she was a communicator. Mm -hmm. uh, she got out and did a lot of communication. Yes. And one of the things that uh, my evaluation pointed out is that you have continued that um, we haven't haven't lost it um, and I think that's very important to let the community understand what's actually going on here uh, because it actually it's it, we, we charge them a lot of money for it <laughs> and uh, they ought to know what it mm. is that they're buying thank you just one more yes one more comment I think from the student perspective, I appreciate the amount of time that you go to each and every school and see the learning that's happening, meeting with the principals, showing support for the staff, I think is vital and I, that shouldn't be understated. I mean, both of my children comment on a regular basis, oh, I saw Mr. Bernard. Mm -hmm. You know, he came into my classroom, he read a book, he asked about a digital learning project that was happening, and I think that's very important. I think sometimes administration can get lost in an office, and I think that you really make a concerted effort to get out there and see what's going on in the schools, and I appreciate that. But he knows who your kids are. And <laughs> he says so everything. He sees everyone. <laughs> Trust me. Thank you. It's very important for me, believe me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, it's nice to hear that they get something out of it, but Absolutely. I believe I do too. I've got a question for you. 
Um, uh oh. When, oh, no, it's a good one. <laughs> when you were the principal, you were all over the high school. Everyone knew you, you knew every child's name. Um, and when you took over as superintendent, you were not afraid, that's Concerned. not the right word, but you were kind of um, Concerned. <laughs> about going to the other schools. I would tell you that the, the, probably the most enjoyable difference for me as the superintendent from being the high school principal is the exposure to the elementary schools. Uh, my entire career was at the secondary level before becoming the superintendent. I always worked in a high school and didn't have, I don't think, the understanding of the, the, the breadth of work that goes on in an elementary school and just how fun it is. I mean, the, the teachers, God bless them, they, that is work, boy. I mean, they are just, they, boy, they are making such an impression at a young age. And, and, and the, the, it's a real treat to be in an elementary school for me to, have, and to witness firsthand what is, is being asked of children from kindergarten and first grade, right up through the line. I'm very impressed with, um, number one, what the expectations are and students' abilities to meet that. So I feel like I, quite honestly, have to make the concerted effort to be in the schools because it's very easy to get caught up in the office um, with just the, 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 the work that has to get done. But I, I do hard schedule, um, as I think all of you know, time in each school um, each month and um, that's the hard scheduling. And then I do just, you know, often go to a school just because I want to kind of go into a school and see, um, see what's going on. And I, I do think it is, it's, I think it's critically important that I do that. Um, and I think it's critically, critically important for the staff, for the teachers, for the students. But it's important for me, too. I think it helps to keep me, I'd like to think it helps to keep me in touch with what's going on, what the needs are, and to be able to speak to what I see, um, you know, keeps me informed. Um, so I appreciate all of the feedback, um, you know, as, as was said, I think, Jerry, you said about um, the team of people that I work with, and that includes, I think, um, it certainly includes Michael and Patrick and Cynthia as the three other central office administrators, but it includes many more than that. It's from administrators to teachers to support staff. This is a good district. Um, I inherited something very good. I think that's true. Um, but I think, um, you know, it does not, it's not one person's job. And it, it, I am only as successful as I uh, can be with, with the support of the people that I get. And the community, this community has been outstanding to me. Um, it's 14, coming up on the end of my 14th year here. Um, I can honestly say, you know, I, I look forward to coming to school. I still come to school. I don't come to work. I say I come to school. Um, so I'm very happy. I appreciate the feedback. There obviously are areas where um, I look to grow. Um, but your, your, your comments to me, not just tonight and through the evaluation, but the feedback that you give to me on a regular basis is, is appreciated. And it, and it um, you know, I, I, I hope I'm doing, you always hope that you're doing a good job, but it's, it is nice to, uh, to hear it. But I, I can honestly tell you, I, whatever challenges might confront me on a daily basis, I've never gone home feeling like the work we were doing here, the work that I was doing was not appreciated. And, and that's, that's true today as it was. July 1st, 2003, so, so thank you. So you've been on the job for three years now, right? Coming up on the end of the third, third year. You learned all the students' names? You know, that's, that's, so I talked about what one of the things I've enjoyed the most, and that is the elementary school experience. One of the things that I, um, I miss the most is the more, uh, the regular interaction with students. You know, I miss, I miss, I miss them. Um, but I don't know the names like I used to, <laughs> just because you don't have the yeah. extended exposure, you know. And uh, but Michael and I, every morning, yeah. just about every morning, yeah. are on Main Street when the when the high school and middle school are arriving, and we spend some time out there just about every morning, 20 or so minutes, whatever yeah. it is. Um, and it's good. We get work done too because sometimes kids need th need things from me. Uh, sometimes yeah. the staff are asking us questions, but I think that visibility um, is hugely important. So. But I do know your kids' names, and I know your, <laughs> and I know your grandchildren. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thanks. I think that's a good thing. I agree. <laughs> I agree. My grandchildren, I mean. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, I guess we're done with that. Uh, next item on our agenda is school choice, public hearing, and vote. Under Education Reform Act of 1993, there's a need to hold an annual public hearing on school choice. Coming us, 
school choice district means that North Reading will accept students from other cities and towns for enrollment in its schools. Once a student is accepted or as a choice student, he or she is a student until graduation or the student opts to withdraw. The district receives an additional $5,000 from the sending district's Chapter 70 funds for each student accepted. After the hearing, Mr. the Mr. school Chairman. committee has to make a decision on the participation by taking a vote. And that vote is then reported to DESC by June 1. Over the years, the motion approved by the school committee has included to not participate in the school choice program because it, as it's presently constructed, it ensures the needs that the needs of some of the children in the Commonwealth cannot be met. So we come to the public hearing, close the public hearing to public input. Right. right. So we're going to now open, open. the public hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, public hearing on school choice is now open. Are there any comments? Same as last year. <laughs> hearing none, <coughs> the hearing is <coughs> And we have to take any, a any discussion from the committee? No, I know in my time on the committee, we've never voted to approve school choice. I think the $5,000 probably has something to do with it because I think our per pupil expenditure is around what, 14, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14, five. 14, five. Right, yeah. yeah. So that's one reason, but um, we've always, I've, in fact, I don't know that I've ever sat with a member who's voted in favor of it. Maybe they have. Boy. I, I can't remember. Yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Okay. Is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to not participate in school choice because the program as it is presently constructed ensures that the needs of some of the yeah. children of the Commonwealth cannot be met, whatever that means. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Right, next item on our agenda is the fiscal year 2016 end of year financial report. Mr. Conley. Great, thank you. So um, in your packet this evening was the end of the year uh, financial audit report, which um, essentially is a required to be done annually. And again, just as a reminder what the end of the year financial report is, is a essentially a source and use document that essentially throughout encompasses all the revenue and expenses that are kind of spent throughout fiscal year <coughs> 2016. And um, there's obviously a specific methodology that we need to kind of report um, the data based on the DSE's chart of accounts. And um, it is a pretty extensive process that takes, you know, several weeks to uh, complete. And once the fiscal year is closed, it's, it's due by September 30th every year. And you're required by um, March 31st of every year to have an independent outside audit firm audit the, the end of the year financial report. So what's in front of you is the audit report. <coughs> and I think I'm, you know, I'm happy to report that um, essentially what the audit report is, is stating, that there was you know, almost no or minimal findings and everything was reported accurately in the, in the correct methodology and, and certainly reported on, on time. Um, so we. Um, certainly we're pleased with how the, the audit report uh, came out this year and um, really with that being said I don't know if there's any particular questions on anything in the report so again it's a report that has several different schedules and you know, encompasses all expenditures and revenues um, from a variety of accounts not just the general fund special revenue accounts included gift accounts gr you know grants so but um, everything was found to be you reported uh, correctly. Any discussion? No, the only the only question I saw, and that was just a reporting change, was about the bus ridership. Right. Yeah, that was reported. That I didn't hear that. Bus it was, ridership, oh. like whether we get right, reimbursed so was, um, versus paid. There was a bus ridership. Um, they had. I actually I actually had originally reported a couple uh, items. Uh, actually, actually re re reported a chart that was <coughs> essentially was a bus ridership of students that were you know greater than two miles away, and we do a methodology every year where we take 
uh, the ridership of those students that rode the bus greater than two miles, and we actually need to calculate that down to a mile and a half. So there were a couple of riderships that reported two miles, <coughs> and um, that was noted, and it was just it was corrected. Yeah. So that was that was that was the one item that was that was found. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any further? Yeah. Your halo starting to fall a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. They have to find something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I had to ask a question. No, I, believe it or not, we said that too. It was actually just the way the data. A lot of times when they find something, it was the, we did the report and it's the way the data was copied over. You, you're entering so many numbers, yeah. and uh, but um, that's why they do it, right? The next item on our agenda is the North Shore Education Consortium establishment of capital fund. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, in, in my role as <clears throat> a member of the Board of Directors um, for the North Shore Education Consortium, um, all representatives have been asked to bring back to their respective school committees um, a request to sign on to um, supporting the establishment of a capital fund for the North Shore Education Consortium. I do recommend this action. Um, but just to give you a little bit of background, um, the North Shore Consortium um, does own property um, for a part of its educational collaborative that obvious needs obvious kind of maintenance uh, needs and such um, for being able to fully service the students from its participating districts. Um, collaboratives such as, as the North Shore Consortium can uh, apply for funding or support through the Mass School Building Authority, so they are a little bit limited in their um, scope of access to resources in order to do any kind of capital projects that they might want to undertake. Um, but the Department of Education recently mandated a change um, in accounting procedures for the consortiums um, that serve students with, with disabilities, um, which does allow for the establishment of a capital fund. So the, our board obviously views this as a positive. Um, without an established capital fund, the, the limits of the law uh, would put um, a cap on the amount of surplus revenue that would be allowed to retain each year. Um, but because of the establishment of the capital fund, we are able to move um, any um, annual surpluses into, into this newly established fund. And our board for this school um, has, has set a cap. We would actually cap it at $650,000, which would be um, approximately 3% of the annual operating expenditures. So we saw, we saw, I think, we saw that as good kind of accounting practice, first of all, um, <clears throat> and also saw that it, um, it, it also struck a healthy balance between what member districts are seeking um, or, or are asked to pay essentially for students that attend the consortium, but also recognizing that there were some kind of short-term and longer-term capital needs that would make the facilities um, appropriate for as educational institutions. Um, one example I can give you the, of that is um, a, a, the lobby of the main uh, campus on Sawyer Road in Beverly has kind of a brick um, floor uh, in the in the main entrance of the school and it's 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 uneven it's it's literally stone brick that is grouted or, or cemented and and it has it was it was a building that was retrofitted to be a school and it makes it very difficult for um, students who either have um, a wheelchair or um, some sort of a support locker um, to navigate the floor so that's kind of one of the er short-term uh, items that's hoped to be addressed so essentially what, <clears throat> what I'm being asked to do is to um, uh, have the, the North Reading School Committee um, sign on uh, to um, support the establishment of a capital fund. I think it's good practice. I feel that the uh, presentation that's been made by the Executive Director and also the Director of Finance and Operations at the school has been a good presentation and has you know, exercised, I think, sound judgment in their uh, proposal to all of us that I'm now you know, carrying forth to you. And this needs... Um, two-thirds of the member districts to to approve it and I sense that that will happen and I'd like for North Reading to be one of the one of the districts that supports the initiative yes Julie just to clarify John this does not um, allocate funds from our district to the consortium beyond what we already pay for right. tuition for students right. that attend correct no it, they, they would not be coming to us and saying because you've now signed on to this, North Reading is responsible for X amount of additional dollars. No, this is, and this is only if a surplus is realized. If a surplus is realized in a given year, 
um, the idea is that that money would be channeled toward <coughs> um, toward the capital fund. I think, for example, in, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. In the last fiscal year, North Reading's gain would have been about seven thousand dollars. Am I right? I think that's correct. Yeah, you know, rough, correct. like a little, uh, like seven thousand sixty-two dollars yeah. or something. And I just think, for that amount of money, it's better spent because these, again, these are North Reading students, for my, right. you know, that, that are attending the school. And I think it's a it's a, a reasonable request to allocate an amount of money such as that um, for something like this. So no additional funds would be committed. That's correct. So I think if the if the um, if the committee agrees, it, it would, Mr. Chairman, require a, a vote, yeah, a motion, a motion. And a vote. Do you need a vote to approve the capital plan as well, or just for the only to establish the fund? Okay. Right. And there is a document that the um, chairman would need to sign, if you agree. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the creation <coughs> of a North Shore Education Consortium capital fund consistent with the guidelines established by the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I stand corrected. Okay. It is to approve the plan as well. And, the and also plan. to approve yes. the NEC capital, capital plan, plan as well. Correct. Second. 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 Yeah. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for that. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. So now we're on to routine matters. Um, we have uh, open session minutes for the budget workshop on March 23rd. The motion? Motion to approve yeah. regular meeting minutes of the school committee for March 23rd, 2017. I'll second it. Made and seconded. Any comments, questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And the open session uh, minutes for March 27, 2017. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to a regular <coughs> meeting minutes of the school committee open session March 27, 2017. Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Unanimous. Um, budget update. Yes. Conley. So, um, in your packet this evening was the uh, budget update that reflects financial activity through the middle of April. And um, as has been the case in the past, we've broken down the report through ex expenses activity and payroll activity. On the expense side of the equation, you'll notice as we've reported in the past, there is some funds available in the special education our district tuition line item, and that is mainly because we again exceeded our uh, tuition prepayments at the end of fiscal 16 and we projected uh, we would during the uh, FY17 budget development process. Um, again, we've uh, been tracking utility expenses uh, pretty closely throughout the fiscal year. Um, and as I've reported in the past as well, we do anticipate spending the majority of our electricity budget and we'll, we do anticipate having a small amount of funds available in the gas budget to, to reapportion at this point. Um, I've also reported that we've experienced um, higher than anticipated maintenance costs throughout the district, in particular uh, maintenance costs to address HVAC uh, issues at the middle school and high school campus. Uh, again, to date we've been able to kind of manage these costs to stay within budgeted ranges, um, but again over the last couple months of the fiscal year we'll certainly need to monitor these expenses closely as we pre prepare to close out the fiscal year. Um, the food service program closed out uh, the month of March with a small net loss of $725. Um, to date, uh, through the, the month of March, um, the loss is $14,573, although this is significantly less than it was through this time last year where the net loss was over $20,000. Um, as I reported throughout the budget development process, we are still hoping and anticipating that we will lose slightly more than $8,000 at the end of the school year. So it's certainly been, um, you know, mail sold throughout the year. Each month have been up throughout, throughout the district. Um, on the payroll side, there's really nothing significant to report. Um, as I talked a little bit about tonight during the FY18 uh, development uh, budget, process, we again in fiscal 17 budgeted a higher than typical staff turnover savings amount. Therefore, 
Um, on the report, you do notice that the you know, projected uh, year-end balances for the teachers and some of the salary line items are certainly less than it has been in the past at this time of year. Um, to date, there has been less of a need to appoint long-term substitutes um, to fill for extended leave of absences for our staff. So as a result, you, you'll notice that there is we are projecting a, a, a surplus in, this, in the substitute budget accounts, um, but most other payroll projections at this time indicate that, they, again, they'll be very close to, to budgeted amounts. So, um, so we're kind of getting there. We have two months remaining this, this fiscal year. I think we're certainly behind the, the heating season and obviously the, the, the winter season. So, you know, we'll be a busy couple months as we prepare to kind of close out and review all open purchase orders and open encumbrances. But um, I think this time we're in solid, you know, financial <coughs> standing to close out the fiscal year. I know we've, we've taken on that, a little bit of that risk, so now we are relying on um, ending the year with a certain, you know, available balance to prepay tuitions and carry over some funds in the, in the um, bus revolving account. But I think we're in, at this point in the year, we're in good, good standing to meet those, those projections. So I'll open it up to any, any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, no staffing issues at this point. Uh, bids and donations. Uh, for <coughs> Good morning. Sure, hold on. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to recommend that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $100 from Edward W. Moynihan to support the North Reading High School track team. I'm going to be the second. Yeah. <laughs> Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Exactly. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,000 from the Compass mm -hmm. Group Chartwells to provide a scholarship to a graduating senior of the class of 2017. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,500 from the North Reading Youth Athletic Association to offer the cost of the new outfield fence at the high school. Second. <coughs> motion made and seconded. Quick question. Refresh my memory. Why did we have to put that fence there? We didn't have to. It was a, um, it was a desire. I think, they, I think the baseball coach believed it was created more of a, a you know field. kind of warning track yeah. type yeah kind of a field aspect so it was it was a privately funded okay um, i just looks, couldn't remember my husband looks it's right. and it, it's temporary by the way it comes back and the sleeves where they were recessed in the ground about two feet okay and that when the season's over the fence can come out and get stored for the oh, until the next spring yeah i just couldn't remember yeah, it came from the baseball coach. I mean, I think yeah. he wanted to make it more of a stadium, stadium. effect and have an opportunity to hit the ball out of the ballpark a little bit. So, cool. yeah. Very good. He's got power hitters this year. Next year, he may take it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, so. It's temporary. That's why I'm sitting in the chair and not on the ceiling. Yeah. Oh. No, because we'll still use the, the outfield in the fall. Yeah. We're going to need it for soccer. Anyway, right, so. right. Yeah. Okay, now. Yeah. Sure. You may... No, okay. And seconded, yes. And seconded. All right. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $3,000 from the North Reading High School class of 2011 for the purpose of pur purchasing signage for the middle and high school campus. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Before you vote, could I uh, just a little comment about that? Just so you have, uh, you might remember you accepted a donation not that long ago from another previously graduated class. So the sign we're looking to purchase is quite expensive. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that the class of 2017 is going to consider a class gift toward the country. It's about a $16,000 wow. sign. It's, a, it's an electric sign that would have like a digital message board in it that really? you could program. Nice. You might have seen the them. one down by the field, that one you have to With the letters, out. yeah, right. It would be, to, the idea would be to, you know, get rid of that. Whether we put it in the exact same spot or not, I don't know. But I don't, I don't want there to be a thought that this is something that's going to happen 
very soon. It's 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 You're collecting. We're collecting toward it. Yeah, it's probably a couple of years in the making, but um, I think when we when it's ultimately when the money is ultimately there, I think it could be a quite a nice sign for us to have. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $6,000 from the North Reading <coughs> Diamond Club to offset the cost of the new outfield fence at the high school. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> and the, the chair thanks all of these contri contri contributors for their generosity. Sure. That way it won't be attributed maybe to the vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, subcommittee updates, finance planning team. That'd be you and I, Jerry. What can we say? Well, we met one last time to try to get the budget balanced. We were able to do it. We discussed the revenue plan. It was a combination of uh, coming up with a little bit more money, some of it savings from our liability insurance premiums, some of it from free cash, some of it um, unexpended so snow and ice. Snow and ice money. Chapter 70 was a small increase. And the combination of those additional revenues plus us reducing, as Michael uh, reviewed today, um, our budget uh, got us to a point where we had a balanced budget. I, I do think we backed into it, but again, the finance planning team worked very hard to get us to this point so that we can go to town meeting in a few weeks with a balanced budget. The town also balanced their budget, I believe, too. I mean, they, they did. They, yeah. So there's no no deficits at this point in time. Uh, we also talked about the high school project uh, fairly extensively, where we were at, what we're trying to do. I think we've reviewed that tonight. We're still in the process of finishing the drainage work and also some of the landscaping. Um, we uh, and then moving forward on the punch list items as well. Uh, I think Mr. Bernard per night, uh, reported that the little school roof was complete, the project was finished, and we were prepared to close it out. Yes, under budget. Under budget, came in under budget. Mm -hmm. uh, we did review um, the turf field bathrooms. So as you all know, those are out to bid. The bids are due in, I believe, May 4th. Correct. And those bids will be based on one, a uh, facility that, by the way, has been reduced in size because. Uh, we took an appeal to the was it the state plumbing board, uh, and they reduced the number of fixtures, bathroom fixtures, from an overall number of 13 down to 10. So there'll be five ladies' fixtures and five men's fixtures uh, in the building. So we're we're asking. For, I'm sorry. No, oh. you're good. Oh, um, we're asking for um, bids on the construction of the bathrooms. We're also asking for an ad alternate for construction of a pad for a snack shack. <laughs> And we're also <coughs> asking for the cost of the bathrooms plus the, the uh, snack, uh, snack, uh, snack shack there. So um, let me see what else. T -t -t we reviewed the town meeting articles, and uh, and I think that was pretty much it. We did talk about the Berry property a little bit, too. A little bit. And that's closing in. Uh, hopefully, it looks like everything's on schedule. Seems they're gonna, to be moving they're, ahead. They're going to town meeting again. Well, There's another vote required, I think. Correct. And... Um, if we can close by December 31st, we'll maximize the amount of money that we can retain, which is going to be in the vicinity of $20 million for the town. So, um, and it yet to be seen what we'll do with that money. But, so I think that's pretty much it. And Maybe first in line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as important as the $20 million in cash, the potential for revenue from taxes. Right continuing every year at about three million dollars estimated yeah will be a real plus because it's an over 55 development and we're not expecting a lot of uh, a lot of cost associated with it yeah, it's probably the largest new growth that we'll ever have I mean as far as that three million at one time I mean, yeah so. right next uh, on the agenda is the athletic subcommittee we met on uh, April 25th. Uh, the Webster's not here, so it's all on Mr. Benazio. Yeah. Okay. The Athletic Subcommittee met. We discussed the, the uh, revolving account, the close out of the revolving account. It looks like for the end of the year, we're actually going to have uh, some money left over, about 17000 Mike. Is that right now, that's the projection. Well, so if everything goes well, about $17,000. Mm -hmm. We had a lot high participation for the spring sports, and we got a lot of user fees in. Um, let me see. What else do we have? Uh, I got the wrong 
We talked about the, the uh, I think we, at that Talk meeting we also talked about the lavatory we facilities. We talked about the bathrooms again. That's been the top of conversation yeah, most of the meetings we've had over the last uh, six to nine months. Uh, we talked about the uh, outfield fence, that that was yep. in there, why it was there. Janine already highlighted that. Um, what else, John? Just field, field maintenance seemed to be good. Uh, the field maintenance is something efforts. that's being shared by um, the town and uh, in the school department, and it's worked out very, very well. Uh, in the past, we opened the softball field. Uh, the first game was last week. Thursday of uh, school vacation. played on it, right. and then immediately after the varsity game, there was a youth softball game on the right. field, and Same the kids day. were delighted to be playing on that field. Um, we also talked about when to open the all-purpose field. We don't think it's quite ready yet. We want it to set a little bit longer, although we did use it for the javelin on sat on Sunday, but Correct. I think that was about it for right now. That's right. Uh, I, mean, I think we're going to kind of play that one by ear, you know, just yeah. to make sure that everything the is grass taken is taken well. well. I mean, Marty Tilton from Recreation says it's really taken very well. It looks terrific. It, it it's does really look, starting to green up now. Good. It's almost a shame to have to play on it, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it looks really good. So that's that was pretty much it. I think. yeah, we had a, it was a, a shorter meeting than we're used to. Yeah, yeah, there were fewer things on the agenda. But I think a lot of our but the big thing is going to be the use of the fields. The fields, you right. You exactly. have to spread out the use. They, you can't be on them, you know, every day, all day long. Right. I just have one question. Regarding the decreased amount of fixtures, could that, I would assume, affect the bids that come in? Yes. Like it would, yes. it could be lower. We had actually oh, yeah. put the bids out, believe it or not, for the the, for the reduced number of fixtures. Correct. So the bids went out for the oh, reduced. Okay. So if they we went. Didn't, the if we didn't win that appeal and we were fairly confident that we were going to, that's right. Then I we see. would have had to have amended the bids to for okay. the higher number. So okay. they're actually out there for basically ten. So toilets. they should be okay. They should be consistent with what we ultimately yeah. have okay. now. Yeah. So that's the way and, we did it. Okay. And since it's a modular structure, that's a whole module that would be required. It, mm -hmm. It's pretty substantial additional cost. We actually yeah, like the design. It would come it's, it's much, yeah. much more we, rational. We, we like it better. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next item is uh, sub subcommittee schedules. Um, the athletics facilities committee is meeting May fifth at three p.m. in the distance learning lab. Finance planning team May eighth at eight fifteen a.m. in superintendent's conference room. Athletics subcommittee is May. 23rd at 12:30 in the superintendent's conference room. And administrative report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I do have a few things I just want to share with you. Um, the first is if you have not been by the little school, and I know some folks mm -hmm. have already uh, since the weekend. <coughs> excuse me. They really that entire school community really deserves a lot of credit for um, the new playground that you have been accepting donations toward for a couple of years now. Um, it's spectacular. It, it is beyond anything I think that I expected would come together in literally, I'll say two, two full days of, of the, the real nuts and bolts work, but it was, there was some site preparation that took it, uh, place in advance. But um, I was at the little school on Thursday and they were prepping the site, um, but to, when I went there yesterday and saw what I saw, it was, I was amazed at what, you know, less than 72 hours. It is, it is fantastic. And I just, I felt I, I, I needed to acknowledge um, tonight, um, you know, the effort that was undertaken by the parents um, that were involved, um, the school administration. Um, there were teachers over the weekend. I know Scott Burke, who's here tonight, has, has been outside with Mrs. Molly, and, and it really was, uh, an outstanding effort that was undertaken, and there is a, a formal um, uh, dedication ceremony set for Friday, May 12th. The school committee members will, will be getting an invitation to that um, at three o'clock in the afternoon. But um, really, they are they are to be extended. Uh, not only congratulations on behalf of the school district, but appreciation. It really, it's it's quite a quite a beautiful playground. So, um, and I believe it's going to be. Uh, unveiled tomorrow. tomorrow yeah tomorrow they, they wanted to let some concrete final step but I think mrs. Molly is planning on letting each grade level out outside for a period of tomorrow to get on the equipment and uh, mm. yeah. 
they actually got me on it yesterday. <laughs> this is Molly and I were on it yesterday. They wanted a picture for their newsletter. It was, so I'm a, I don't know. It was, lot, I was a lot more agile at 12 than I am at 52. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was, some of the stuff was not easy. Um, I just, I do want to just mention a few other things. Um, I, I attached again a, a, a flyer for you, but the Northeast Massachusetts Youth Orchestra will, uh, for the second year, be performing in our performing arts center. They love our venue um, with all good reasons. So there are two uh, free concerts uh, being held this Sunday, May seventh, one at two thirty and at one at five p.m. Um, I did attend last year, very, very impressive, very impressive, um, particularly given the age of the, the children that participate. So we do have some North Reading um, students, children participating as well, and um, if you have the opportunity to, to attend, I would strongly uh, urge you to do so. The 2.30 two performance starts with the younger yes. uh, children, and they, they move up. The 5 p.m. is the uh, older students, and if, if you uh, enjoy uh, good music, uh, this, is, this is like going to the Boston Park. Yeah, it really, it really, it was impressive. It's really good. I and agree. free. And free. And local. And, and I think it's a nice thing for this community to showcase, really. I mean, we got them in here last year. It was actually Mr. Bowers that I think spoke with the director and put her in contact with me and they, they were very eager to come back here this year. So I, it could it's be amazing, an amazing this facility. I mean, oh. we had, Again, we hosted that Division Four track meet here for the entire state of Massachusetts. Absolutely. Uh, you know, there were, I don't know how many teams out there, but hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, and hundreds of students. Yeah. It was crazy it was out there really. Sunday. And, uh, and we won both the boys and girls. So, I mean, it's just but the same thing with the Performing Arts Center, the way yeah. we're using it now. Yeah. So, I should have mentioned that the high school principal got an email early this morning that he shared with some of us from um, a track official that was at the event. Uh, Sunday, 35 years I think had coached, retired, and now as an official, wrote a very thoughtful email complimenting um, Sunday's experience here. We, you know, he didn't need to do it, he did, but he sent complimenting how well organized. Singled out a particular student assistant mm -hmm. from North Reading, Rachel Hill, and he was he wrote a very thoughtful, detailed email about. What a great what a great event it was here, and, and complimented what and we have we had. The coach's name, but Satori. Well, Satiti and, and Ryan Spitty, the North Reading High School graduate, yeah. 2001. Um, <coughs> well, I think one of the coaches or the head coach. Yes, yeah, he is. Coach, and they've done girls' a team, fantastic yeah, fantastic job with that team. So, so you're right. The facility just lends itself to yeah. so much more. Once we have bathrooms. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. we had the outhouse. What a fun! What a fun! Lines of them. Yeah. In the spirit of con continuing congratulations, so our, our own uh, Craig Stone, <clears throat> whom uh, many of you know, and is the coach of the Linfield North Reading Cooperative Wrestling Team, um, was honored, uh, one of four coaches across the state was honored at um, the um, mass chapter of the National Wrestling, Wrestling Coaches Hall, uh, Hall of Fame dinner um, on Saturday night. It was a very nice, very nice event. Actually, Bob Kraft came in unannounced. Really? He showed up and went to the podium, and I guess really? a gentleman that's his, that you called him his right-hand man, someone that works for him, is involved in the State Wrestling Association, and I think he was the reason why we were able to get that facility for the dinner um, and the award ceremony. But yeah, he walked in at the back of the room, and you could tell people saw him and started to turn around, and he got a standing ovation and promised a lot for next season as he came off the draft. It was really kind of cool. But um, Craig Stone has, you know, had a legendary uh, coaching career, um, um, mostly in North, in, excuse me, in Linfield, where he was a teacher up until he retired last year. What he is. He's he still, yeah, still coaches girls tennis for Linfield yeah. and continues, continues to coach um, wrestling. wrestling, the co-op team, which is hugely successful. So it was a nice... A nice thing for for Craig, and I Craig's just want to live in North Reading. Reading. Oh, right, right, as a resident here. Yeah, he yeah. lives down off a of side. Good guy, street, so, good yeah. guy. So, I just wanted to alert you to <clears throat> um, a, 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 an additional a grant that Mr. McKay, the principal at the Hood School, wrote to the American Academy of uh, Dermatology, and he wrote a grant to install a shade a shade structure at the Hood School. So. We got awarded this grant, it's a, um, an $8,000 grant, and um, he is working with um, our facilities department as well as the town's um, building inspector 
to install um, a sunshade uh, structure, kind of it's a, if you can picture like a four poster covered um, shade um, structure near the, near the playground at the Hood School. Um, and so that's gonna be happening and I just, I, I wanted you to be aware, number one, that we had written another grant and got it and that you, you know, it's, you're likely to see this shade structure which I think is a very good idea, um, you know, likely being installed once all of the approvals have been sought. Um, just on a similar note, we also um, applied for and were awarded um, through through the um, through my office um, sunscreen dispensers <clears throat> that we're going to install um, down here. Um, they work almost like a hand sanitizer type dispenser, and but they're filled with with sunscreen, which I think is a is a. I saw some of the kids today, quite honestly. It, that had participated yesterday, and say, uh, some of them were. My daughter I, could have used it. Yeah, I saw her. Home, and she goes, "Mom, I yeah. can't sunburn." I so this her. would be something we'll have available down at the right. fields. I mean, we could probably use more, but mm -hmm. we were awarded two. Yeah. I think it's a good it's idea. Down at the turf field. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing I have for you is um, I attached in your packet to a um, a notice of a fundraiser coming up on May 17th at Fadrucas in uh, Reading. This is for the um, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America. So as you know, we, um, we do a lot of these types of fundraisers with partner restaurants and such where a portion of the proceeds raised on a particular night go to um, an identified cause. So that's what, that's what this is um, on Wednesday, May 17th. And again, it's at the Reading uh, Fadruckers um, from 5 to 8 p.m. So 20% of the um, proceeds uh, from your purchase would go um, to supporting um, the foundation. So I wanted to call that to your attention um, as well. And I'll be there. I bet you will. That's all I have. Thank you. We have no correspondence at this time. Uh, future business, May 15th at 6.30 is a regular meeting here. May 30, um, Tuesday is uh, at 6.30 is a regular <laughs> meeting at the uh, Little School. And June 5th at 6.30 in town meeting in the Performing Arts Center. There will be a free meeting in the Superintendent's Conference Room. And that is our agenda. Uh, a motion to adjourn. Before we adjourn, Mr. Vallis, i just ask uh, the members if they had any words for you at the last, your last meeting before you leave. Billy? Yes. So, Cliff, I want to thank you for your nine years of service here on the school committee. You served as a great mentor. I appreciate the work that you've done with the Suburban Coalition. You were kind of <coughs> the person who was the cheerleader, who represented us and our thoughts about the $2 billion that the, the state is shortchanging us. And um, I wish you continued relaxation in your retirement now from here. You won't retire long. You'll be back. You'll be bored. <laughs> I'll be bored. <laughs> no, not Cliff. He's got plenty to do. No, but you have been very, very beneficial, not only just to us members, but the town in whole, the things that you've brought to the school committee and countless things that you've put forth. You're going to be missed. Someone's going to have big shoes to fill. Well, Cliff, I've had the pleasure of serving with you for the last nine years and just trying to jog down some, num some uh, words here to describe you. And I came up with considerate, thoughtful, fair, and every decision you made, you're an absolute gentleman throughout the process. You've always been able to listen to other people's ideas. I kind of try to learn from you about that myself. <laughs> but you listen to everybody before you make a decision. You've been a tireless worker on behalf of the students here in North Reading. You really have. Students and families, <clears throat> and um, like Ju Julie said, the work that you've done with the coalition is above and beyond what you're really expected to do as a committee member. Um, You've done great work on the policy subcommittee, which is a very, very tedious, tedious uh, uh, committee to work on, but you've done some fantastic work there, along with Julie and, and others, to, uh, to update all of our policies and procedures. Um, but, you know, where I really saw that you just, you were a leader was with the secondary school building committee. 
Um, you've been on that from day one. Your experience was invaluable mm -hmm. in, in building these two schools. Um, I'm sincerely glad your name is on both plaques because it belongs there. So it's, um, you've done a great job. And, and the, the budget, you've worked tirelessly to get every single dollar you can out of the town so that you could dedicate it to the school department. So I'm going to miss you. Well, I'm coming here. And I've got this to give to you from the committee. Why don't you open it? <laughs> Drop it. No, I'm, can you read it? Yes, I can. In honor of your service to education, Clifford W. Bowers, North Reading School Committee, 2008-2017. Thank you very much. Can I say something before? Nope. Before, yes. before the applause? Yes. <laughs> I, like, like what others have said, Cliff, I, I want to thank you first and foremost for um, your personal support of me in both positions that I've held in the school district as the high school principal and as the superintendent. But more importantly, I want to thank you for your support of the children of this town. Um, those of us that have worked closest with you know how hard you have, have worked and how much time you dedicated and how much thought you gave to um, doing the right thing for children. Um, we saw it behind the scenes. A good number of people saw it out in front, but I think you're your contributions to, um, to the school district will be felt for a long time, and I, I really am deeply appreciative of that. I can't believe it's nine years. It seems like it went by awfully fast. It goes by quick. It really does, but... You um, get by the, the past where it goes. Well, I can, I can assure you that the impact will be felt for a lot longer than nine years, so thank you very, very much. I know you'll still be around, and I'm, I'm glad for that. I'm but, not uh, planning to leave the earth. That's good. That's good. <laughs> we look forward to that, so thank, sure. thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, it, it does seem like it's a fairly short time. Uh, and uh, I, I wish, actually, that I had uh, been able to do it earlier because I think that I, I, it would have been better to have been on longer. I'm leaving principally because I'm getting old. <laughs> I really am. And uh, I, I noticed it in particular. You know, they, they have this, this uh, age thing where you see somebody, you can't place their name. <laughs> you know all about them, so it's not Alzheimer's, but you, you know all about them. Yeah, but that was your wife, Cliff. But you can't, <laughs> you can't remember their name. <coughs> and we had a hearing in here the, uh, a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And uh, I, I looked in the audience, I figured, uh, you know, these people out here, uh, they're gonna, certain ones are gonna, gonna raise their hand and wanna talk, and I'd like to, I know them all, so I'd like to address them by their by their name and not just you know it's like hi Laurie or you know whatever, and uh, uh, and I, I went blank on like half a dozen of them, <laughs> and I'm saying that's crazy, and I wrote them down, um, and and then uh, I, I I knew their name, it came to me as we were going along. It just that, and I'm say, saying, I'm doing the right thing by leaving now, <laughs> while I still can remember their names. Uh, but it's been, it's been an interesting experience. I, I believe in education more than anybody, uh, maybe more than you. Uh, education is, is really what, what makes the world go around, and uh, we do a, very, very good job in this town, and I'm very proud of that. Mm. I'm very pleased that uh, I was able to be a part of of this, and uh, for the for the growth that has occurred uh, over the nine years. And when I uh, when I first uh, ran, it was because we were in a finite financial disaster. Uh, we had uh, closed things down on Wednesday afternoons. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, that's, that's crazy. There's got to be some way to make the system more efficient. 
And so I ran, and I came in, and I sat down with Colin Nelson, and he, uh, and I, I kept hitting him with questions, and he answered them. And I realized that we ran a very efficient shop, uh, that it wasn't a, uh, we're gonna spend all the revenue we can get, as that letter in the newspaper uh, this week uh, irritated me particularly, mm -hmm. you, know, you can tell it did. Um, but we don't just spend all the revenue we can get, um, you, you know, and, and we just spend up to that. It's that, that that revenue presses down on what we can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's unfortunate, uh, again, they, I've, I've been uh, beating my head against the wall, I think, for the last nine years with the, with the uh, uh, other funding agencies in the state. They, uh, they shortchange us. Uh, they, they, they claim they have uh, you know, a problem with finances as well. There's no revenue at the state. Uh, I remember, uh, I think it was my first year, writing a, a letter to, um, uh, to the governor and uh, suggesting that uh, he increased the, uh, uh, the sales tax by uh, a, a penny and uh, dedicated it all to schools and distributed it <coughs> uh, completely on the basis of per capita, per student. None of the formula stuff, just per capita. And that uh, that would be a tolerable thing. Well, sure enough, the next year he raised it a penny and a quarter, and we never saw any of it. Um, so I decided maybe I'd keep my mouth shut on that one. <laughs> Uh, but I've worked through uh, the North Shore, Shore Coalition of School Funding, Stand for Children, uh, the Suburban Coalition, and, and through MASC. And each one of them goes and fights like crazy for uh, state funding. And we still end up by not uh, coming out of it. And uh, you, you were at the meeting <laughs> when I suggested to uh, Alice Peisch, the, uh, um, the education person that, that the state uh, runs as the House Committee on, on uh, Education. And I, it, we were talking about uh, implementation of the um, Foundation Budget Review Commission, mm -hmm. and they said, well, you know, you're, we're, we're short, we're not doing enough. And uh, we uh, they, and they finished the study at just the right time so that they couldn't do anything with it that year, and then they were going to do it, take care, take it up the next year, but they weren't going to fund it that year, and they don't understand. <laughs> we can't wait another year mm -hmm. when you eliminate um, music in the first grade in the second grade, in the third grade, in the fourth grade, one year, you have four years of kids that go through the system without music. Right. And, and that, that just, it, it rips your heart out. It's, you know, that, that's, a, um, that's a, a real problem for me. So anyway, I, that, I've, I've, uh, I've, I look back on it and, uh, you know, it's been on, uh, a fair amount of effort, but it, seem like the right thing to do. And yep, that's <laughs> mine. <laughs> the governor. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, phone doesn't shut off the way I like it to shut <laughs> off, but uh, it happens with new phones. So uh, I appreciate all of the, uh, the kind words that uh, have come here. And, uh, and I've, I have said that uh, if these guys, uh, you know, the, the new people that come in uh, in the next couple mm -hmm. of years don't do the right thing, uh, then I'll come back out of retirement. <laughs> I won't remember everybody's name, but at least I'll do the right <laughs> things. Uh, thank you all, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Cliff. Oh, that's right. Move Motion. to adjourn. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs>